This machine has the potential to change everything we know about energy generation. Powered by nothing but springs, it can create an almost endless supply of electrical energy. With each part meticulously crafted, from the crankshaft to the springs, it operates on a principle of mechanical resonance, amplifying energy and minimizing losses. But how exactly does it work? What makes this spring-powered, self-propelled system capable of generating electrical power? Stay with us until the end as we reveal the secrets behind this innovative invention and show you step-by-step step how we built it from the ground up. Manufacturing of Crankshaft Components The journey starts with crafting the crankshaft, a vital component for the system's energy transmission. We begin by cutting a 25 by 540 millimeter steel bar ensuring it's the right length and width. The ends of this rod are machined on a lathe to prepare for further precision work. Each end is drilled and tapped with a metric eight thread, enabling secure attachment to other parts. Next, we mill a six millimeter wide keyway with a milling machine, a crucial step to ensure the components fit perfectly. The steel bushings measuring 35, 25 millimeters are then machined with flat surfaces and holes tapped to a metric six thread. These bushings will serve as support points for the crankshaft. The smaller steel pieces are also prepared, each drilled with a 6 mm hole to facilitate the assembly process. Everything is aligned carefully, ensuring each part fits together with precision, minimizing any possibility of misalignment or vibration. These steps lay the foundation for the crankshaft assembly, a key to the system's smooth and efficient operation, turning mechanical motion into usable energy. Frame Manufacturing The frame is the backbone of this machine, providing the structural integrity needed to support all the moving parts. We start by cutting square steel tubing, each piece measuring 40-40 millimeters. The frame needs to be robust and rigid to ensure that no components shift out of alignment during operation. We weld the pieces together to form the main frame structure, ensuring that each joint is strong and stable. Next, we cut four plates to serve as the base for the machine's legs. Each plate is tapped with metric eight screw holes to ensure secure attachment. After the base is welded in place, we add two support components that will hold the bearings for the crankshaft. These components are welded on each side of the frame and fitted with metric 12 screw holes for added security. The precision of the welding process is critical. Even slight distortions during welding could cause misalignments that would lead to vibrations and energy losses. We also manufacture custom brackets to hold the one kilowatt dynamo, the generator that will convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. Once the frame components are welded and secured, the structure is ready for the crankshaft and other parts to be assembled. The frame's rigidity ensures that the machine operates smoothly without unnecessary friction or vibration. Crankshaft assembly, with the frame ready, we move on to assembling the crankshaft, which will drive the machine's movement. We begin by inserting a spacer to center the bearing, ensuring perfect alignment. The shaft is then slid into place within the bearing, and we add a second spacer ring for further support. At this stage, we secure the shaft and bearing by inserting M6X 35mm bolts, which hold everything in position. Each component is carefully positioned to ensure the crankshaft remains perfectly balanced. We fit a UCP205 type bearing onto the shaft and install a key to hold the part securely in place. Then, we attach four additional components along the shaft, ensuring that they fit snugly and are aligned at a 90-degree angle to each other. Precision is crucial during this step to avoid any wobbling or vibration during the machine's operation. Finally, we weld the components in place, ensuring that the shaft is solid and that each bearing can rotate freely without obstruction. The crankshaft assembly is now ready, providing the foundation for the spring tensioners and other mechanical parts to be connected. Manufacturing Spring Tensioners Next, we turn our attention to the spring tensioners, essential components for maintaining the energy balance in the system. To begin, we cut eight pieces of steel measuring 25 by 45 by 5 millimeters, each of which will play a crucial role in tensioning the springs that power the machine. Each piece is drilled with a 4 mm hole, which will later house bolts to secure the tensioners to the frame. Additionally, we cut eight 30-30 by 4 mm corner sections, 
which will be welded to the tensioner pieces. Once the corner sections are prepared, we weld them to the steel pieces, ensuring that each joint is secure and strong enough to handle the forces generated by the springs. Once all the tensioners are assembled, we place them in a jig to ensure they are perfectly aligned. The tensioners are then welded together to form a stable, reliable unit. These units are crucial for keeping the springs under consistent tension, allowing them to store and release energy effectively. The completed tensioners are mounted onto the frame, four pieces per side, and aligned precisely to work in sync with the rest of the machine. These spring tensioners will help ensure the efficient transfer of energy throughout the system. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Painting and Assembly After the spring tensioners are mounted, it's time to prepare the machine for its final assembly. First, we disassemble the machine to apply the finishing touches on the frame. The entire frame is thoroughly cleaned before we apply an initial coat of primer. This step ensures that the paint adheres properly and provides a smooth surface for the final finish. Once the primer has dried, we apply two coats of metallic red paint, giving the machine a sleek and polished look. This not only enhances the aesthetics, but also adds a layer of protection against rust and wear. Once the paint is fully dry, we move on to the assembly. The four rubber feet are attached to the base of the frame, providing stability and helping to minimize vibrations during operation. With the frame and its components fully prepared, we proceed to reassemble the crankshaft. The key is installed, and the 30-kilogram flywheel is carefully connected. The flywheel plays a critical role in storing kinetic energy and maintaining the machine's momentum. At this point, we begin installing the eight springs, one by one. The springs need to be carefully tensioned, as the amount of force required to tension them is considerable. Once all the springs are in place, the system is ready for its first test run. Performance Test With the assembly complete, we proceed to test the machine's performance and ensure everything functions as expected. The first step is to give the flywheel, connected to the crankshaft, an initial push to start the rotational cycle. As the shaft spins, the eccentricity of the crankshaft causes linear reciprocating motion in the springs, this triggers each spring to undergo cycles of compression and extension, storing potential energy during compression and releasing it during extension. A key feature of this design is the system's ability to operate near the spring's natural frequency. This resonance amplifies the energy produced, creating a forced harmonic oscillation that minimizes mechanical losses. As the springs rapidly return to equilibrium, they transfer their stored energy into the shaft, converting it into rotational kinetic energy. The dynamic coupling between the spring tensioners and the crankshaft ensures efficient energy transfer with minimal friction. The machine's ability to maintain motion with minimal external input is what sets it apart. The elasticity of the springs, combined with the rigidity of the frame, allows the system to sustain energy output once operational speed is achieved. At peak efficiency, the flywheel maintains steady rotation, transferring energy to the crankshaft with minimal vibration. However, if two springs are squeezed simultaneously, it disrupts the balance, stopping the rotation entirely. This challenge presents an interesting problem for braking and energy control, which we plan to explore in future tests. Electrical Power Generation Test To enhance the machine's capabilities, we connect a 1 kilowatt dynamo to convert the mechanical energy from the crankshaft into electrical energy. The flywheel's rotational movement transfers to the dynamo through a pulley system connected by a drive belt. We carefully adjust the belt tension to ensure smooth energy transmission, optimizing the dynamo's efficiency. The dynamo is securely mounted to the frame, with all components aligned to minimize friction. Once set up, we connect the dynamo's output to a panel with eight 60-watt light bulbs allowing us to measure the electrical energy generated in real time. As the flywheel spins, the dynamo produces a consistent output, powering the light bulbs. The system generates a steady 195 volts of direct current, maintaining its speed without any noticeable decline. Although this prototype doesn't produce as much power as previous models, it proves the machine's functionality.
The springs efficiently transfer energy to the crankshaft, demonstrating the system's viability. Test Results and Conclusion The electrical power generation test revealed that the machine successfully produces 195 volts of steady DC, powering the light bulbs as expected. The flywheel's inertia maintains consistent speed, overcoming the dynamo's magnetic drag. Although this prototype isn't as powerful as earlier designs, it confirms the spring-powered system's viability with minimal energy input. With further enhancements, it has great potential to generate more power, marking a promising step toward sustainable energy. Thank you for following our journey in building this self-propelled generator. Share your ideas for improving the braking system or energy output in the comments. Your suggestions could shape our next video.